Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into comparing the Tundra to the F-150. Now, I made a similar video to this one just a couple weeks ago or so, and there's were some really good comments that people made. So I figured I'd dive a little bit deeper into this topic, a little bit d deeper into my experience with both of these trucks, and um, I've driven quite a few of the Toyotas, as you know, and also when I was in the construction field, F-150s and F-250s. My opinion is that the F-150, which is right here, and with that super crew cab, I'd want the four real doors, and the huge advantage that Ford has is that they offer more configurations. And really specifically what I'm talking about is you can get this with a five and a half foot bed, or you can get it with a six and a half foot bed. That is what I'm talking about. If I was still in the construction field, that's the truck that would be the ideal configuration. Four real doors, and then also that six and a half foot bed. By the way, I believe you can get the same vehicle, the Super Crew, with the eight foot bed, if you really wanted to do that. Now, of course, we are talking about very long vehicles when we start doing that kind of thing, but if you're in the construction field, that might be what you want. So jumping back over to the Toyotas, and that Tundra specifically, that's what I'm gonna call the perfect vehicle for the dad on the go, right? So when I was back in the construction world, and if I had three kids or other coworkers hopping in the truck with me, then that would be the right one for me. This Ford F-150, I'd want the six and a half foot bed on it. But now that I'm not in the construction field and I'm throwing three kids in the back, the wife in the passenger seat, and we're probably gonna have some recreational type things that we're gonna be packing in the back of the truck, that's where I come back over and think, you know what, the Tundra is the perfect vehicle for what I'm gonna call the dad on the go, right? So a few more things that really, that I enjoyed about the Tundra. The Tundra, while the five and a half foot bed, I still, boy, I wish at least like a six foot bed Toyota, I feel like would, would be helpful. But now that I've had the truck for three and a half months, I have to say, the five and a half foot bed, I have not found myself yet in a situation where I thought, I wish I had that larger bed. In fact, I'm probably thinking more along the lines of saying, I'm grateful that I don't have the six and a half foot bed. So let me talk a little bit more to that. So we sometimes put like paddle boards and surfboards and those kinds of things in this truck. Some of those are as long as eight feet and we haven't had a problem. You know, you have to tie them down correctly and do all that kind of stuff but they do fit in there and they don't look ridiculous sticking out the back. It's just not a big deal. Secondly, when I park this truck in my driveway, we also have a 2013 Toyota Sequoia, which I've always thought was a beast. When I park this in the driveway, it is a solid foot or so longer than our Sequoia. So it barely fits in my driveway without sort of taking up the sidewalk behind the driveway. So I don't think I would want a truck larger than this Tundra. And the Tundra, I feel like it's a little bit deceiving because of the body lines, which I really like. I feel like it looks like it's a little bit smaller of a truck than it really is. But when you measure this out, and when you're putting it in the driveway and you're putting it in these spots, it's a big truck. Now, here's what I really like about the truck. It's big, yes, it is, but it still works really well for, again, I'm gonna call it the dad on the go. So a lot of days, I'm driving my three kids around. Where are we going? Well, sometimes it's the grocery store right? Sometimes it's Costco. A lot of the times it's Home Depot, right? Just went there the other day to pick up a toilet. And this truck is absolutely perfect for that. So of course, this is going to come with that 5.7 liter V8. Of course, it's got that six um, speed transmission. Tried and true, absolutely proven. I was waiting and waiting to see if uh, Toyota would come out with a little bit larger bed, and then I would have purchased this truck, but they never did. So I decided to compromise, go ahead and purchase it, and I'm so glad that I did, right? Because now I can tell that that five and a half foot bed is going to be just fine for me. So here's one more thing to think about that this configuration with the Tundra and the five and a half foot bed is really nice for. If you're someone like me who's going to be just going to the store a lot, running a lot of errands, you know, Home Depot and those kind of things, yes, but I'm no longer in the construction world, right? I don't need to worry about fitting compressors and all this heavy equipment in the back and, and large equipment in the back. So what the five and a half foot bed does is it means that that truck fits comfortable in normal parking spots, whether you're in a parking structure or whether you are, you know, pulling into the grocery store and these, doing these kinds of things. The truck, now it's, it's a big truck, don't get me wrong, but it fits and it fits comfortably, a little bit big, but you know, comfortably. And that's a huge advantage. When I was driving around the larger Ford trucks, 
they, it was hard, right? You, you were the person who had to park way in the back of the parking lot just because it's such a large truck that it's very, very hard to fit into those spots. So big advantage on that as well. Now, again, with the Ford, I think if I was still in the construction business, I would have to go with that truck because I need that larger bed, period. And that's it. Like there's just, I don't think I could compromise on that. And I would be unhappy, of course, because if I was going to do that, now I have to walk away from Toyota's reliability, from that tried and true 5.7 liter V8 that Toyota has, from that six-speed transmission that is, again, what I'm going to call bulletproof. And now I've got to walk over to Ford. And while some of my trucks years ago, I felt like for Ford, lasted pretty well, at least on the drivetrain, and then some of the, you know, the window mechanisms and all kinds of other little stuff would sort of break, fall apart, not work correctly. But the drivetrain back in the day, I'm going to say, I felt like it was pretty sturdy. I felt like the transmissions, you know, they weren't going out, and at least not on a regular basis and these kind of things. And I felt like the uh, engines, you know, there, there were some that they made that were a little bit more reliable and some a little bit less reliable, and then the whole diesel conversation, but we're not going to go down that road. But now, in today's world, 2021, I, I don't feel comfortable going to Ford yet. And, and the reason is I'm pretty conservative when I shop for a truck. I want to know that that truck has been around a while. I don't want the year right when they come out with a whole brand new truck, right? I want them to work out the kinks. And if it's a new transmission, like this 10-speed that Ford has, that I believe if you get an F-150, I believe you only have one choice on the transmission, that 10-speed, which seems like a fantastic transmission. Now, I don't know if I'm hearing correctly, I think they're starting to come up with more and more little issues on that transmission. And also on these engines, when you go to the Ford dealership, at least the one I went to, most of the engines that they're putting in there are this six-cylinder EcoBoost, putting on turbos, doing this kind of thing. And of course, that helps with the gas mileage, but I'm not interested in that. I'd rather have naturally aspirated. I'd rather have the V8. Yes, I have to pay the price at the pump. But what that means is that reliability down the road, right? Hopefully, I don't have to be going back to the dealership on a regular basis. And hopefully, down the road, 100, 200, 300,000 miles down the road, I'm still in that same engine and the same transmission and hopefully worry-free, hopefully trouble-free. And that is the experience I've had with Toyotas. This right here is my Toyota Tacoma, 24 years old. I literally did so little on this truck. It is ridiculous. I mean, so many little things. Yeah, it went through batteries. And even like the front brakes, I felt like I probably only replaced a handful of sets of brakes. It's kind of a light truck, and I drove the truck pretty light to see how far I could... Uh, make it last and that kind of thing. But again, I just feel like it was built to last and it did its job. And even like at the resale after 24 years and I mean, this truck went through the ringer and I still was shocked that I was able to get a few thousand dollars for it. But so my point is this, if you are a dad on the go or some kind of a similar circumstance like that, you know, or a mom on the go, whatever, Maybe the Tundra is the perfect fit for you. Like, I feel like it's the perfect fit for me. If you're out there and you're in the construction field and you've got a construction business or something along those lines, I might rethink that. And I might think about that five and a half foot bed and pushing it up to the six and a half foot bed. It's only a foot, but it's a big foot. It makes a big, big difference. Again, hauling around the equipment that I was hauling around, the six and a half foot bed was perfect, any smaller than that, and I don't think it would work well. And some of our trucks also had the eight foot beds, which gave a ton of room, but it kind of shows you that the five and a half foot bed just wasn't gonna do it. Hey friends, I hope this video helps you out and maybe helps you make a decision on which way you're gonna go with trucks. Again, if you can get away with a five and a half foot bed, I think now is the time to buy the Tundra. Yes, it's exciting that the 2022 is going to have a whole brand new refresh and hopefully all brand new. Good night, Toyota. You sure waited a long time for this. But at the same time, my thinking is along the lines of why would I walk away from that known reliability of the Tundra? So think about that for a minute, right? That engine, that 5.7 liter V8, that transmission, the six speed, we know that is tried and true, right? We know that that's going to last forever. And if we need parts, they're there. 
how do we know they're there? They've used the same transmission and engine forever. So even if Toyota stops making that, there's still going to be parts for a very, very long time. At least that's what I'm thinking. So while it's kind of exciting to wait one more year, now you guys know I bought my my uh, Tundra as a 2021, but while it might be kind of exciting, my personal opinion is buy right now, especially if you're after reliability. You know, if you want kind of the latest and greatest thing, which I'm not knocking at all, well then of course, wait for the 2022 and let's see what that brings about. Are we gonna go with a hybrid? Is it gonna be a six cylinder with turbos on it? Similar to like the EcoBoost or something like that? I don't know, I don't know where we're gonna go with this. It'll be exciting to see, but at the same time, I feel like if you are buying Toyota for the reliability, then you might want to think about picking up one of these Tundras this year, 2021, before we start making some major changes to these trucks. Hey guys, I really hope this video helped you out. If it did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you go look at my playlist under Tundra Build, you'll see that I've got a whole handful of these videos. Hope you're enjoying them. Leave comments down below and I'll make sure I get back to you. See you next time.